<laughs> okay, so um, uh, a quick overview um, is that what you're going to be seeing today is kind of two or three little programs in one. Um, I'm showing you things that can be made for your dolls out of felt, and I'm also showing them on dolls from my own collection. So what I'll do is with each one of them, I'll tell you what the doll is, and then I'll tell you what it's wearing and how that was done. All of the things that I make are for sale. I do sell them at Grand Wish and National, but you don't have to wait. <laughs> um, I have many times just stripped the doll down and sold it to whoever wanted it at, at the moment. So if you see anything, only one of them has already spoken for. She had a shelf life of about three minutes after I posted it. <laughs> so her outfit is gone already. But I told them I had to keep it until the program was done. I couldn't take it off yet. So what I'm going to begin with is telling you that um, Mattel usually gives the cue, and then the designer of the patterns usually take their cue from that. So within about the third year of Mattel production, they started doing outfits that had felt components in them, co coats or jackets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, whoa, the people who were making the uh, pattern sets for moms and grandmas to do started making some outfits that you could do with felt. Um, it's a mixed bag. It looks like it would be easier to do, and in some respects it is. Felt doesn't ravel, so you don't have to fold over a seam and stitch that. However, for it to look like something, you have to put an ornamental stitch there so that it looks kind of like it. So you're still doing the stitch, so you haven't, you haven't saved a ton of time with it. The biggest advantage is the price point. This outfit can be made from one felt square. Every bit of it from one felt square. Felt squares at Joann's are 49 cents a piece. <laughs> but if you're like me and you have a 50% off coupon, <laughs> this outfit cost me a quarter to make. So that's kind of fun. So, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty high. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, to start with, uh, the first four that you're looking at were done um, roughly using what's thought of as the holy grail for fancy patterns. Only one was ever made. And McCall's was the one that did it. McCall's always gets my highest score for quality pattern making because usually what you make with McCall's will turn out for that. Not so in this case. Epic fail. Oh, really? Possibly the worst pattern set ever made for dolls ever. There are eight outfits on here, seven of them, I'm sorry, no, eight outfits on, all eight of them will not make what you see here. It will be a horrible fit. I only have this because Lenita was kind enough to loan me her. She has the real thing. You can't find it. And I made photocopies. Um, but every single one of them has significant um, uh, reworking of all of the patterns if you want it to look the way the picture looks. They will not come out like that. Most of them are horrible fits, way too large, or, or other, other problems that, that you have with them. One of them, even to this day, I have not been able to correct and get it to come out straight. Maybe, you know, a sewing god like Virginia could possibly figure it out, but, but, but yeah, but, but unless I'm really drunk, I'm not trying it again anytime soon. So, <clears throat> these first two are actually right on the uh, Francie set. It, had a hat that doesn't fit and a bill that was too large, sleeves too short and a body that was too small, hips that would fit a circus tent in them <laughs> after you were finished with them. So all of that had to be modified before you get what you see here that actually looks like what the doll is wearing on there. But I thought it makes a really cute suit. It was worth doing it when it was all finished. This is why you get the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, a first edition standard Francie, straight legged, no twist waist, no eyelashes, but sort of a counterpart to the standard Barbie that came out in the TNT era. Uh, so you could get a little cheaper version of Francie. I love that particular doll. It wears clothes beautifully. Second one is also on, again, similar problems. Uh, this one is a longer coat, but it came with boots and a cute little hat and modifications. You can get this. The biggest thing that I thought was unnecessary here, maybe because they thought people who didn't sew well needed the help, all the seams are to be done on the outside, according to the instructions, and then trim it really tight. 
but you don't have to do that. Yeah. Just do it regularly, put the seams on the inside. It turns out fine, even the boots can be turned out and you don't have to see those seams. Mm -hmm. This is Twiggy. She is used, uh, made using the Casey head mold. Uh, the hair is a little shorter, but the big notice noticeable difference is her eye. Uh, they have tons of mascara and eyelashes on there because that was the Twiggy look. So kind of cute. The other two, it's just me having fun. I just decided to take pieces and mix and match them. So I put the long coat with the slacks and got a whole different look. This is Casey as a brunette. Uh, in this particular case, I just invented a skirt because I thought that would be cute with the short jacket. And this is Casey as a redhead. She was never made as a redhead, only as a blonde and a brunette, but some of the brunette hair, as we saw, is unstable in other dolls. Same thing here, and it oxidized to red. So, lucky us, you can get a blonde brunette and a redhead if you want them. Also, this ribbed felt. Yeah. Okay, you're all wondering. <laughs> yeah. I found it at, at, the, at the fabric store and I, oh, this is really cute. It's got texture and I used it for several items. They no longer carry it. Oh, of course. So, of course, the you're coolest things us. they get yeah. vanish and you can't get them anymore. Um, many little patterns were made for Skipper and those are pretty decent fits. And here's one. Uh, it's just a cute little jumper uh, with a blouse and boots. And I like to add accessories like purses and, and hats and headbands and stuff because it needs a little completing, in my opinion. But uh, couldn't be cuter, I think, on, on oh, her. Yeah. So uh -huh. cute. Uh, that is a first edition uh, skipper. She came in dozens of hairstyles uh, and colors, or, or hair colors, I should say. This was a real standard blonde version of that doll. This is uh, a version of a standard scooter, first edition with the tan skin. and. Uh, Scooter was done as a blonde brunette or a redhead, and they were very consistent in their hair colors. You don't find variations on those. But as that sort of a pale blonde, I thought blue was cute for uh, coat and hat. Very mod era, in my opinion, or crossing into mod era in terms of its look. This is also an early edition skipper, so and funny. she is. Um, what is referred to as a color magic hair skipper. Some of them are rooted with the color magic and they faded out, but some of them were also rooted with multiple hair colors. And I have some that are rooted as uh, both brunette and red. You can see that they were done that way. This one has blonde, brown, and red strands in it. You have wow. to look up close, but you can actually see that in it. And. Um, a lot of them require you to do some ornamental stitching with your to give it some detail, and you want to be real careful with that. You want to make sure that if you're doing that, you get straight lines, because even Mattel didn't get that right on some of their vintage pieces. And there's nothing worse than an alternate thread color going around your border, and then it's jagged in some places. <laughs> and like, sort of you can't not see it. Yeah. yeah, you keep looking at it. So you have to be very, very careful if you want all of it to uh, do what it's supposed to do. Yes. When you, when you do your ornamental stitching, do you do that before you cut your pattern? Always. Down? Yeah, yeah. Let, work well while it's still flat, flat and put it all in place because it's much, much easier to do that way. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, these I just invented myself um, because it was kind of easy to work with. So I just created the patterns for this, except for their boots. I borrowed the boot pattern, but the rest I just did myself. You saw Ricky at, um, I think, Thanksgiving I brought him, and then I made a little partner for him just after that. And uh, the fun part about Ricky is his hat was made from a, a medicine cup. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. Every time I see story. things that are small, what can that be in Barbie's world? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, uh, Ricky um, came uh, as a friend for Skipper. He was always only sold as a standard version. You never found him in a Ben Lake version. He comes, though, into um, skin colors because he was created in the pre mod era where it was still tan skin. So, this is that. And then later you're going to see him as a pink skin because they were still making him in the TNT area and just shifted everything to the pink final. Um, Scooter as a brunette, always cute. Her, you know, scarlet letter ribbons are a little bit out of place for a Puritan, but okay. <laughs>
this is Ricky in his second version, and he has the pink skin, so he's brighter and a, a, little, a little bit cheerier. Again, just a pattern I made myself because I wanted something for Christmas that would be fun. Looks like the shelf on the, or the elf on, oh, the, on shelf. the shelf. <laughs> Ricky always gets short shrift because he only had about six outfits sure, that were made yeah. for him. And so I always try to have a couple things for people who collect Ricky. My Ricky is entirely outfitted by you. <laughs> <laughs> he wears exclusively Paul Roots designs. <laughs> this one, could she be any more Doris Day? Yeah. I, mean, I just yeah. love the green. Yeah, and it, it's, uh, lime is one of my absolute favorite colors, and so I always try to do things in lime. Oddly, they don't seem to last very long. <laughs> Someone snatches them away. But I, uh, I, I just think this looks great. Like it would look really great in yellow too. Like Doris mm -hmm. Day wore yellow all the time. But this is actually a commercial pattern from. I think it might be in advance. I'd have to go look again, but it might be in advance. But maybe McCall's. But uh, wonderful fit. Comes out nice. Love the hat. Gorgeous too. This one is, I believe, also from that same set as, as this particular one, which was also McCall's. The hat's very similar. I was making this on the day Diane Carroll died. Aww. And I was looking at my screen, you know, it was all over the internet, and I was like, you can't die. I'm making you a coat. <laughs> so I always like to name my, my outfits, and I called it Gray is the Color of Goodbye. Oh. You still have the one I gave you? I gave you one of Diane Carroll. That might be her. No, you gave me a Christie. And that is, it was Christie. It's, Christy. it's actually this one right here. Right here. This one is actually the felt comes that way. It was actually in a, a, a wonderful tie dye. It's just, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I said, that, I have no idea what I'm going to ever make out of that, but I have to buy this right now. And there it was when I needed it. So I was able to do that uh, for this Christy doll. Um, Christy uh, also oxidizes many of her, you'll find with the red hair or even fuchsia. It goes to lots of uh, interesting shades. It's hard to find one that was made in the later end of the run where she stayed a brunette, but I do have one. This is a Malibu Barbie, and people kind of undervalue them. These are a great doll for people who are starting collections and want vintage pieces. They're, they were done in such a large supply that you can get them for a song. You can get yourself a collection that includes Barbie, Ken, Skipper, Francie, and PJ, all five dolls for under $100 because they're, they're relatively easy to find. You'll pay the most for PJ, she's a little harder to get, and also for a, a, a decent Barbie. I got my Ken for $3, I got my Skipper for five, I got my Francie for probably five, because they were abundant. But they'll fit all of those era clothes for people who are collecting the Mattel things. And if you take them out of their swimsuits, which nobody ever seems to want to do, and put them in clothes, they look great. They look great in vivid colors, they look great in pastel colors. The tans kind of work with all of it. Uh, this one was a little trickier because the pattern pieces are huge. It's done as one piece. So you need a piece of felt that's about this long to get the two parts front over to back is one piece. And then you seam them together. Yeah. Got another. Uh, Christy here, also with oxidized hair. This was probably also a McCall's, but it's uh, the little um, pant, it's a, it's a little hot pants top all in one piece, actually has a zipper in it. You have to put a zipper in. Um, a little bit bulky, but kind of worth it, because <laughs> the zipper is kind of cute in it. Uh, and I just did it in shades of kind of a, a purpley shade and uh, maybe magenta. Buttons match her hair. Yeah, kind of work for. Oh, where do you find the little small zippers? I'm sorry, the find the what? The little small the zippers. Um, you can get them uh, uh, in short, like this, like at yeah. sewing shops. Oh. At sewing shops, yeah. And I've had a lot of friends who have gifted them to me over the ages. Hey, I got this teeny zipper. Can you use it? Oh yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, now we're moving into another arena. 
Um, Takara Jenny dolls are a doll that was created originally as the Japanese version of Barbie. Takara got a license from Mattel to create a doll that was more suitable for the Japanese market because they don't like the Barbie look. They like a cuter, sweeter uh, looking doll with anime face. And so they created one that was called Barbie and they were very successful with it. And like often, Mattel pulled out their license and no longer allowed them to do it. And Takara said, to heck with you, we are not going to discontinue this doll. We will rename it and we will continue it. It's, it's the second best selling doll in Japan. Yeah. And so all they did was come up with this really cute story that said um, Barbie was in a Broadway show called Jenny. And she played a character called Jenny. She loved the experience so much, she changed her name to Jenny. <laughs> and they simply kept the dolls and changed Ken to Jeff, uh, Barbie to Jenny. It is still the second best selling doll in Japan after, do you know who? Barbie. No. no. She's way down the road. Momoko. Pull up, Momoko. No, it's, it's a doll called Lika. Lika came first, and she's also made by Takara, but she's a skipper size. And they just adore those little petite dolls. And so uh, she's not, I don't think, officially recognized as Lika's older sister, but they're always shown together in catalogs and, and, um, and so forth. That company created magazines for Jenny that are to die for, absolutely to die for. They would come out quarterly, one for each season. And every single edition tells you the dolls that are available, the clothes that are available, the accessories that are available, gives you pattern sets and step-by-step -step instructions for how to make outfits, sometimes of the most incredible proportions. It's amazing to me. You would have to be an, a renowned sewing expert to do it. But because they know not everybody can do that, at least one pattern in every issue is made for somebody who doesn't even have a sewing machine, who would sew it by hand with felt or something super, super easy. And I've marked just a couple pages so that you can see that. You have to remember it's Japanese, so it's backwards. Yeah. But they'll come up with a little outfit like that made of felt and give you a pattern for it. And you can sew that. Um, Is it written in English at all? No, it's all in Japanese, but they do really good illustrations. So if you look carefully, you can do it. They give you crafts, like how to make a little house out of a box, and all the details and proportions for how to do that. Um, yes, even a wedding dress out of felt, so that the non-sewer would be able to do that. Um, what era is that? Well, this is from 92. I don't know that it's still published. But what they would do at the end of the year was they would do an anthology and they would put all four together. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole year. So I've got all four, mag all four all in four. here. And I finally had an excuse to use it. So here's the other great part. Francie and Jenny are the same size. So you can use the, the Jenny patterns to make clothes for Francie. And every single one of them has sewn up perfectly on the first try. Now the only thing is, because they're expecting you to do a hand cast over, your seam has to be like a scant eighth of an inch for that to come out right. So you're really tight on your seams, but it all works. This, I was looking at for years and finally, finally had the opportunity to make it because I just thought it was the cutest back to school kind of outfit entirely made out of felt. Mm -hmm. Now I will say it required fewer pleats than they called for, but I just cut off the excess and it came out okay. That's this outfit right here. There is a complete Oxford button down shirt underneath of the hoodie, all done from felt. Wow. So cute. I added the tam and I created a little school book out of felt to go with it as well. I just thought it worked for her. And this is um, Casey as a blonde. Do you steam your seams, your, your pleats? Uh, well, it'd be iron. <laughs> you know, I do put the steamer on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, the socks are extra done, right, Paul? I made the socks, but not out of felt. Those are out of You made the socks, too. Yes. yes. Amazing. The, um, <laughs> this is a, um, 
a later edition Francie mm -hmm. with the short flip hairdo, which is just, she's as cute as can be. And once again, a simple sheath, a bolero jacket, I invented a hat and purse to go with it, sure. and a belt to go with it, and some accessories, but... Did, <laughs> did you show the line tonight? I'll just set that down. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. uh, this one is uh, just the same, it's actually the same sheet as this, but I just, it also came with an option for a wrap. It's just one little piece, but if you put some detail stitching on it, snap it together, put a little bead closure on there, it looks like you got something. That's a beautiful I fit. Bent it a little yeah, pillbox yeah. hat and a purse yeah. and some jewelry like for her. Yeah. Yeah. This one is another sheath with a completely different feel to it. It's got sleeves and little, little sleeveless uh, with some straps. Uh, and they teach you how to make little flowerettes mm -hmm. out of the tiniest bits of felt you can imagine. You almost, oh. you're getting your needle through it and pulling it shut. How is this ever going to turn into a, oh, it did. It's a flower. <laughs> and then uh, the, the thing that I adore about this magazine is that they don't stop at giving you this. They show it to you made and then they cover it with sumptuous accessories, buttons and beads and make little jewelry for it to show you. You can make this look amazing with pennies. You know, you make this first and then you accessorize it and it'll look like a million bucks. This one, I wondered if I would ever have an opportunity or, or need, because I don't usually do wedding clothes, but when I saw that wedding dress in there and that it was made of felt and they show it to you with no ornamentation on it, and then they show it to you, if you just go to the trouble to sew lace, layerings of lace on it, this is what you will get. Amazing. Yeah. These, uh, this is Jenny right here, Takara Jenny. Mm -hmm. This is a standard fancy, and this is one of Jenny's friends, and her name is Kisara. Jenny sets the record for the number of friends that any doll had. Barbie doesn't even hold a candle to really? it. Really? <laughs> My friend Marsha gave me a lot of the dolls and this uh, before she passed away. Um, of the, uh, she was probably the foremost expert on Jenny in this country. She had all of them. And she had including three of these incredibly hard to find boy dolls in these anime warrior costumes. Like there's a blue and a red and a black one and it's almost unheard of that you can even get one and she had all three of them. She knew them all. This, this doll probably has at least 38, 40 named friends with their own head molds, wow. not even sharing head molds. Oh, wow. So that's how amazing it is. And they do show you, uh, like, here is a smattering of them. That's oh, just some of the friends that are hers. And the Japanese also have an obsession with this uh, kind of cutesy period look. It's not exactly accurate to period, but they're in love with all of the detail and the frilliness of it. <coughs> so they, in every issue, they give you a few of these, like if you had six years to make the outfit, you could do it. <laughs> but one of the things that I thought was even the most impressive of everything else is they teach you how to make your own Jenny out of felt. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and she can wear the Jenny clothes that you made. So all of these clothes can fit Jenny or Francie. I just had to make the shoes a little bigger because the, the feet are fuller. But there's your, you can even buy your own Jenny doll from me with completely outfitted if you want one. That's me. <laughs> so I think I have everything up here. Um, so if you have any questions for me, any I'd be happy to answer. Questions for Paul? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, do you find uh, the new felt is color fast? Are you feel comfortable with the color fast? Since in the old days, it used to fade. Yeah. I, my luck has been that it hasn't been fading. Um, so I have some things that I've kept for myself. Very, very rarely do I do that, and the color is still there. So it, they seem to be doing a better job with that. They are also, you also no longer have the worry of the color of the felt bleeding out onto the vinyl. I've never seen that happen even once. So yeah, this is a beautiful color. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, one of the reasons I love working with felt because you can get such vivid colors at, this, at the stores. And they're always coming up with some new ones, so it's kind of neat. Phyllis? The, the red 
one with the polka dots? Uh -huh. Are the polka dots on the felt? The polka dots are on the felt. Oh, cool. And yet another one that I can't find them doing it anymore. <laughs> so I bought a, like a few sheets of it. I think I have it in blue and pink also. Nice. Uh, yeah, like on the pink here you okay. see it. Oh, and now I, I can't it, find that anymore. They cut mm -hmm. that out. Oh. One more question. What's the weight of the felt? Is it a thin felt? Or it's very light. It's very thin. But I noticed that they're now selling it in two thicknesses. They're selling it this, which I kind of prefer to work in, and then a heavier one. Um, for instance, I could only get the larger pieces in the heavier. It's much thicker, and so is this one. And it, if you just touch it, you can feel the difference. It's got more body to it. Um, I don't know whether I like it less or not. It seems to have worked, so. They're using plastics in a lot of new felts that I've noticed at Joanne's. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. Because I know it's when I'm, I'm as a card maker and there's designs I like my sister and I like to use 100% wool yeah. felt. Yeah. It's hard to find that. So I and I've been going to Joanne's and Hobby Lobby and Michaels and a lot of them have been putting the recycled plastics in their felt. Oh wow! Oh. Did not know that. That's more color. It might be. It might be. I'll leave it all up here. So if you guys want to come up closer and look or take pictures or anything.